Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's this is so relevant. And anyone who says otherwise is is honestly either uninformed or they're deliberately misleading. So uh, in, in Australia, well, I know you have a bigger, broader audience than that. So uh, just like in Australia, as it is in the United States, the most common form of infertility in women is polycystic ovary syndrome. I say PCOS. I know in Australia, they'll sometimes say PCOS, but just PCOS is this problem where at its the obvious problem is that the ovaries are accumulating uh, cysts. And all of these cysts actually were little eggs that, that are there because the woman fails to ovulate during her ovulatory cycle. And ovulation requires, to bring in the sex hormones, ovulation requires a, an enormous spike of estrogens. The estrogens are the hormone that will proceed and ultimately kind of contribute to just pushing the ovaries to actually have one of these kind of developing eggs, one of these developing follicles to actually bud off of the ovary and which is actually the act of, of ovulation. In so doing, all of the other little follicles that we're developing will degrade and just kind of work back into the ovary and turn into nothing. But you have to have an estrogen spike in order to ovulate. It, it, remarkably, insulin has an inhibitory effect on the ovaries ability to create estrogens. It's a little known fact that all estrogens in men and women were once testosterone. So the ovaries and, and the testes, so all gonads to varying degrees, will take some of the testosterone and convert it into estrogens. And it does this through an enzyme called aromatase. Now insulin steps in and it inhibits aromatase. And it's always doing it a little bit, but as, of course, as insulin is going higher and higher, now it's pushing aromatase down further and further. And so the ovaries are trying to convert all of this testosterone into estrogens, and now it can't. And so two things happen. The woman fails to have sufficient estrogen release to ovulate, so she develops the polycystic ovaries. And two, she now has an abundance of testosterone, which is having other undesirable effects like maybe um, development of body hair, uh, male pattern baldness, um, acne, and, and similar consequences. And, and again, those are undesirable. They're not directly necessarily contributing to the infertility, but all of it is in some way derivative of the high insulin. And then, uh, Stephen, not, not to less relevant to sex hormones, though, but relevant to fertility is what happens in the man and how his insulin resistance is affecting his blood vessels. And that's why insulin resistance is the leading cause of erectile dysfunction. It's not because it's damaging his testosterone or anything like that. It's hurting his blood vessels. And you can't have an erection without uh, substantial dilation of the blood vessels. And insulin resistance stops that from happening.